amazing God. Amen. We serve an amazing God, EKM. We serve an amazing God. There is none like him in all the earth. You can search and you will find that there is none greater, not wiser. There is no one to love you more. There is no one there that will be with you more. Your strong tower, your shield and your protector. That's the amazing God we serve. He can't put your hands together. Give the amazing God some praise, some worship. Hallelujah. We are so grateful for our amazing God who loves us in spite of ourselves, who loves us in spite of our situation, who loves us in spite of what we did, what we don't do. He's an amazing God for those who are joining at home, those who are in the house today. We just want to set the atmosphere where we can sit in the presence of the Almighty God. We want to just sit, we want to just rest in His in His presence. We want it to be like we are entering the holies of holies, where His presence dwells, where He resides. And in this place, He says, What? He blesses. He heals, he restores, hallelujah. He heals a broken hearted, he heals a broken mind. And that's what we want from the Lord today. We don't want anything else. We just want him to know that we love him. We just want him to know that we adore him. We just want him to know that we are thankful for all that he's done. We don't want to ask him for anything. We just want to love on him this morning. We just want to love on him. We just want him to know that we appreciate him and that we are thankful for all that he has done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, most high God. Hallelujah. Lord, we just are grateful. We are so thankful for being in your house today. We know it's your grace and your mercy. Your love that has kept us and today we don't want to do anything else but to let you know that we love you we want our praises to come up to you with love with a heart of love God for all that you have done for the ways that you have made hallelujah hallelujah for the ways that you have made for us for even to be able to be here in our right mind. We thank you. And we just want to love on you this morning. We ask that you be in our midst, hallelujah. That you touch every heart that is here and online. Every need will be met this morning in the name of Jesus. There'll be nothing that will be withheld from us, the upright children of God. We understand our authority and our place in you and that we have the freedom, hallelujah, that you will be our provider. You said, Lord Jesus, that you will give us everything according to your will. So right now, we love on you. And as we send out the praises this morning, we pray that in turn that you will give us what we need to survive, that you will give us what we need to continue, that you will give us what we need that we may be able to stand flat booted hallelujah and know that you are god bless those who are in the house bless those who are at home hallelujah let your presence be felt hallelujah and today we will give you the thanks and the praise that you so deserve and we glorify you now in jesus name amen than able he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask or think come on do you believe that this morning can oh come on let me see put your hands together Oh, wow. 
Thank you, Jesus. I've, I've seen God operate in my life at a very young age. And on a Sunday morning like this, 22 years ago, I was heading to church and I got a phone call that my son was on his way. And I said, this can't be true. I told the, I told the hospital, you sure you got the right person? And they said, your name's Calvin? I said, yeah. And they're like, yes, she's about to give birth. And I said, but he's due in May. And they said, I know, but he's on his way. Turned back around and went to the hospital. And of course, he was a preemie. He was born under two pounds. He was one pound and I believe 12 ounces three months early and he's standing there right now 22 years today my my eldest son so i thank god for him i've seen god work i've seen god work i've seen him provide i've seen him heal i've seen him bless i've seen him do so much i've seen him with my own eyes I seen him with my own eyes and I know that's your testimony this morning because I saw you sing with passion and joy and delight. Do me a favor, turn to your neighbor on your left and, and your right and say good morning, good morning, good morning. I salute all those who are online this morning as well. Let me see those digital high fives, those heart emojis in the chat for those who don't know me i am pastor calvin chambers the lead pastor of this lovely fantastic awesome ministry here in the city of toronto called ekm toronto of course and i lead alongside my lovely wife pastor mo who is a little under the weather today sorry bernard i'm slightly too loud who is a little under the weather today so lift her up in your prayers amen Let's go to our announcements before we move on. Monday night recap. Monday night recap. For those who don't know what that is, on Monday nights, a uh, team of people get together and discuss the sermon. They discuss the sermon. So if you want to go deeper in the sermon, if you have questions, or if you want to add to the sermon, this is what you want to be a part of. Jump on. Jump online. It's on Zoom, and it's for one hour. Amen? Mid day breakaway midday breakaway every wednesday at 12 p.m for 30 minutes i minister to those who are online i give you a spiritual energy shot i seek the lord and then i decree and declare what the lord is saying in the season to those who are online so if you have time you can jump on most people don't show their face they just put their headphones on they're at their cubicle they're in their car and that's all good it's an easy breezy environment but as i mentioned to them that i seek the lord and i give prophetic utterance over those who are online and i also told them if you are online and you you take notes and you listen diligently at the end of the year you will realize that you saw the year unfold before it unfold because the lord will speak and tell you of things to come so if you have the time jump online that's midday breakaway ekm singles make some noise some of them are like i'm not claiming that status no, 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 no. Okay, so ECAM Singles, we are hosting a, a singles mixer on March the 4th, and it's called While I Am Waiting. So singles come out. You're going you're gonna to learn what you should be doing while you're waiting. I'm also going to disclose what marriage does not solve. What marriage does not solve. I will be <laughs> speaking about that, okay? What it won't fix what you need to have going in amen so you want to be a part of this singles mixer it's going to be me my wife and um uh tanika chambers and robert chambers has also agreed to be on the panel that night so it's going to be a fantastic night amen, amen. two more and then i'm done christian Disci disciplines christian disciplines that is wednesday february the 22nd and it goes straight to march the 8th so it's three wednesdays straight in a row you will be taught christian disciplines i think i was uh sleeping when i did this flyer because it looks weird <laughs> either way um oh, 
okay, all right, all right. I was about to say, dyslexia at its finest, but I can see now. All right, so Christian, Christian Disciplines, Wednesday, February the 22nd, and that's three Wednesdays straight at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Thank you, Evan. 7 p.m. on Zoom, all right? So you want to jump online and learn. This is going to talk about fasting. Pastor Kadeem will be teaching on this, by the way. This is going to be uh, fasting. What are the other two, sir? Fasting, prayer study of scripture so you want to jump online and you want to be enlightened okay lastly ekm social bowling night that is march the 17th on a friday night at 7 p.m so listen you want to get your game on you should start practicing from now because uh me and moreland are extremely competitive and we're gonna shut this place down so just want let's go eagles let's go eagles that's what's up is that why you came late this morning? <laughs> he started celebrating before they won. <laughs> I just played. I just played. He's always here. <laughs> oh, man. Amen. Amen. Listen, so uh, that bowling night, you want to register. Everything is at ekmtoronto.com. You want to register because we need to know ahead of time. We plan to provide the food, which is uh, pizza, I believe, and what, whatever they serve there. So we need to know ahead of time who's going to be there, and then we can possibly put teams together and start the trash talking early. Amen? Is that cool? Is that cool? Amen. It's giving time here at EKM. It's giving time here at EKM. I just want to encourage you to continue to give in spite of what you're hearing, in spite of what you're seeing. Trust the Lord and know that he will indeed come through for you. Remember what I preached about last week, the men standing at the gate trying to get Mordecai to bow? Well, those men represent fear. And you could be at the gate, right at the door of a breakthrough, right at the door of a promotion, Right at the door of something that God has been preparing for you this whole time. You could be right at the door and here you have these, these voices saying, why aren't you bowing? You need to bow. You should bow. You have to bow. But I dare you to stand strong and know that as long as you go all out for God, you're going to be okay. I'm not promising you houses and land, money and cars. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is it's good to be a giver because God gives seed to the sower. God gives seed to the sower. And anything attached to fear, you automatically know that's not of God because we don't operate in the spirit of fear because it doesn't come from our Heavenly Father. So how many people this morning is going to stand and haven't done all stand? Is that you this morning? Raise your hand. If, if, if that's you, where you like, come what may, I'm going to stand. I'm going to stand publicly. Remember what we spoke about last week? I'm going to stand publicly. I'm going to stand consistently. I'm going to stand in spite of. Amen. And if that is you, I'm going to pray for you this morning. Father, I thank you for every giver under the sound of my voice and all the givers online as well. God, I always thank you for blessing this house with so many strong givers, people who do not waver in their faith. I pray that you will continue to reward them. I decree and declare nothing but success over them, nothing but your best over them. In the name of Jesus, I speak over 2023, and I say 2023, you will bow to God and go the way God has designed for you to go, that the believer will end on top, regardless of what happens in this year, that we will end on top, that we will stand and say that we have never been forsaken by our heavenly father for he provides all things according to his riches and glory for those who haven't have yet to catch the revelation of why we give as believers i pray that you illuminate their path open their eyes open the eyes of their heart lord so that they can see you in the name of jesus and we decree and declare once again that this will be a monumental mental year in your precious holy name we pray amen amen come on can we put our hands together put your hands together if you're excited about jesus today come on put your hands together if you're excited about it maybe things in your life don't look like how they should be going but you're still excited you have this unwavering faith that no matter what comes you believe in him you're still excited about him come on can we get excited about jesus this morning come on can we lift up a praise to him
Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for being a firm foundation. The righteous run into, and they are saved. We thank you, Lord, for our anchor grips and holds towards and onto the solid rock. You are our firm foundation. Everything else is sinking sand, but Lord, we place our trust in you and you alone. Father, speak to us today. Give us a word, a rhema word today. Set our week up today, almighty God. Yes, in the name of Jesus, remove, pull down, pluck up, destroy, cast down in the name of Jesus. Anything that is not of you, we cast it down right now with the authority under heaven that you have given to us that even the winds and the seas obey when we open our mouth as believers when we declare and decree a thing it shall be so in the name of jesus we speak to the atmosphere and we decree and declare that anything that is not like you is removed 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 that there is an open heaven there is an open heaven there is an open heaven above us in the name of jesus we overturn we counteract we up we pull down we break and we destroy anything that is not like you this is your house this is your house this is your house father you do what you feel to do And our answer will always be yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. Yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. Yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. Yes, Lord, yes, we will trust you and obey. Yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. Yes. Ah, yeah, son, Dobosia. Yes, Lord, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Oh, yes, mighty God. Yes, Jesus. Yes, almighty God. Come on, come on. You might as well. We're here. Let's get it out. Come on. Let it out, let it out, let it out, let it out. Because if we don't praise him, the rocks will cry out. Let it out. Come on, band. Rashid, let's go. Come on, Rashid. In the name of Jesus, almighty God. In the name of Jesus, I pray right now that you'll touch every, every heavy heart this morning. Every heavy heart this morning. I pray that you'll touch all those who are going through this morning. Father, you are here. You clearly want to move into a work. So, Father, I pray that you'll begin to breathe on us. Move on us like never before. Touch us from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet. In the name of Jesus, regulate our minds. Regulate our hearts. Yes, almighty God, every crooked path, make it straight. In the name of Jesus, illuminate our path. Oh, yes, illuminate our path, almighty God. Let the light shine in the city of Toronto through EKM. We push back the gates of darkness and we announce this morning that light has come. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Let your light shine in the name of Jesus. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. In the name of Jesus.
Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to switch the program. If you, want to, if you need a touch from God, I want you to come to the altar. If you need a touch from God, I want you to come to the altar. He's clearly here this morning. He's clearly here this morning. I don't know what you need, whatever your need is, whatever it need, it, it doesn't matter. This is not a specific altar call. It's just whatever you need. If you need a touch, yes, come to this altar now. Come to the altar now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want everyone out, everyone that's not at this altar to stretch your hands to those who are at the altar right now. Stretch your hands, at, stretch your hands in the name of Jesus. Father, I lift up every individual that has come to this altar. You know what their needs are. And there are individuals right now that are afraid to come, but I stand in proxy for them. In the name of Jesus, God, whatever the need is, as long as it's according to your will, I pray right now that you will make a way out of no way. Make a way out of no way. Make a way out of no way. Are you going to come with me, church, or not? Make a way out of no way. Yes, oh God, we decree and declare that you will provide because we know you will. Your word declares that you will take care of those concerning you, oh God. So whatever the need is this morning, we lift it up before you, oh God, because you said that we should cast all our cares on you. You don't want us to walk with the anxiety and the troubles of this world. You don't want us to walk with the cares of tomorrow. So Father, we bring it to you in the name of Jesus and we cast it at your feet. For at your feet, there is victory. There is victory, there's love, there's peace, and there's joy. So we cast all our needs to you right now in the name of Jesus. Every need has a name. And you have a name above every name. So every knee must bow and every tongue must confess and every need is subjected to the Heavenly Father. So Father, touch them right now. If it's healing, I declare healing. Yes, if it's healing, I decree healing for those online as well. If it's confusion, I speak peace. Peace. I speak peace in the name of Jesus. Financial difficulties, I decree and declare that you will bless them with wealth from on high. Whatever it is, if it's mental health, I decree that you are regulating their minds right now. Whatever it is, God. Whatever it is, God. Whatever it is. I speak right now that the I am that I am has now intervened and all our needs shall be supplied according to your riches and glory. In your precious holy name I pray. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Let's clap our hands because we have the victory. Because we have the victory. Amen. God switched the script. And that's okay. That's okay. That's absolutely fine. We still have a word this morning and we're still going to end on time. Amen. So don't worry. Amen and amen. The word this morning comes from our associate pastor, Pastor Kadeem Edwards, who is such a faithful servant within this house. Such a faithful servant within this house. And I pray that this word will touch your heart. If you are in need and any, any need, I mean anything, I don't care what it is, I want you after service to come and see me. We're going to get your number, your information, and we're going to work with you and speak to you because this is a ministry and this is what it's about, right? Sunday morning is incredible, but I can, I can feel, because I pray every day for, every, for everyone in the ministry, I can feel the burden right now. I can feel that people are really going through some hardship and pain. And I just want to let you know, you don't have to do life alone. You don't have to do life alone. 
We have so many pastors within this house. We have leaders. We have capable people. All right? So please, please, don't battle by yourself. Come see me. This is what we're here for. Amen? Let's stretch our hands to Pastor Kadeem, and we decree and declare that God will use him this morning in a supernatural way. In your precious holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Keep that same energy for one second, church. Keep that same energy for one second and stretch your hands to your pastor. Just stretch your hands to Pastor Colvin. Keep that same energy, church, just for one moment. And just, you know your pastor. Just pray for him. Just say something to the Lord about him right now. Just ask the Lord for something for him right now. Just mention him to the Lord right now. Come on, church. Just mention him to the Lord right now. You know how he's a faithful servant of God in this place. You know what a blessing he is in your individual life. You know how God has used him for you. You may or you may not know, but he sacrificed so that he could do the work of the kingdom right here in this house and for us just speak well of him before God just for 10 more seconds hallelujah hallelujah bless our pastor Calvin father bless his family Lord God bless all the plans that you have for them and let everything that you have planned for their lives come to pass the way that you want it to be to the glory of Jesus Christ in his name we pray amen amen somebody clap for the Lord real quick okay cool now that your practice clap is done uh, let's like clap for the Lord Amen. Amen. God is good today. Amen. Amen. Musicians, thank you. Worship team, thank you. God bless you guys. Amen. I'm going to get straight into it this morning. We are going to go to the scripture. We're going to go to Luke chapter 20, and we're going to read... Uh, verse 20 to verse 26. I'm reading from the Christian Standard Bible. Luke chapter 20, verse 20 to 26. It should be behind me. And it reads as follows. They watched closely and sent spies who pretended to be righteous so that they could catch him in what he said to hand him over to the governor's rule and authority. They questioned him. Teacher, we know that you speak and teach correctly and you don't show partiality but teach truthfully the way of God. Is it lawful for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But detecting their craftiness, he said to them, show me a denarius, a Roman coin worth about a day's worth of work whose image and inscription does it have caesar's they said well then he told them give to caesar the things that are caesar's and to god the things that are god's they were not able to catch him in what he said in public and being amazed at his answer they became silent Thanks be to God. Father, in the mighty and precious name of Jesus, communicate what you want to communicate today, Lord God. Don't let my ego get in the way. Don't let my pride, my arrogance, my desire to, to babble on and on and on about intricate things that have to do with the Greek and the Hebrew and all of that stuff that I love, Lord God. Whatever of that you want to use is available to you. Whatever you don't want to use, I put aside, Lord. 
I pray that right now you would communicate to your children what you want them to understand about you and about yourself and about our relationship with you, Lord God. Teach us how to understand us so that we might understand you, Lord. Be blessed, be glorified. Thank you for the word. In Jesus' name, amen. We just read a passage of scripture. Um, if, we, if we go to the beginning of this chapter, just to provide some context, uh, the Bible says that the chief priests, the scribes, and the Pharisees, they began to examine Jesus um, at a higher point in his ministry. And, and seeing that he was, you know, just to make it how it is, just seeing that he was popular and seeing that he had a lot of people and he was getting fame and he was, he was teaching in such a way that was offensive to them, they started plotting on him. They started trying to figure out what they could do to, to bring him down or to get in his way or to turn him over to the authorities. And the passage that we just read follows a passage where he tells a parable uh, that is pretty much against these important people, these learned people, these educated people, these people who have all the answers. He tells a parable that's pretty much against them. And uh, they start trying to find a way where they can plot on him. And so they come up with a plan. They come up with a plan that, that doesn't have to do with religion. And it doesn't have to do, at least from their perspective, with spiritual things. And it doesn't have to do with who he is or who he's claiming to be. But they come up with a plan that they know is going to be dear and sensitive to the hearts of the people. They decide to address something political. How many people know that when we talk about things that are political, people tend to get charged? Right? So they ask him a question. They ask him, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar? The context behind that is that the place where they live, the Roman prov province of Judea, is ruled by the Roman Empire, and the Roman Empire uh, puts hefty taxes on the people who live within the empire, right? And so when taxes are too heavy, it's difficult to live. It's a burden to these people, and they're hoping and expecting that the way that they've understood their scriptures, a Messiah is going to come, he's going to take all their enemies and put their enemies under, under, under his feet, and he's going to destroy them and defeat them with the sword, and then he's going to establish an everlasting kingdom that they're a part of and that rules the entire world. And they hope that he's going to come and he's going to overthrow the Roman Empire first because the Roman Empire is specifically plaguing them. So anything that has to do with that level of politics, it just it charges them right away. So they ask him this question. They ask him, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? And this is a trap. Because if he says it's right to pay taxes to Caesar, they figured, the people were going to take hold of him, rip him apart, and realize, no, this guy, he can't be the one. He can't be the Messiah because he's telling us to obey our enemies and, 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 and obey the things that they're enforcing us to do. It's how the trap was supposed to work. But on the other hand of the trap, if Jesus happened to go the other way and, and, and say, no, it's not right to pay taxes to Caesar, they were going to report Jesus to the authorities so that the authorities could rip him apart. He'd no longer be a problem. Nothing to worry about from this guy. We put down another revolutionary or whatever this guy was trying to be. But they set a trap for the wrong guy. They set a trap for the wrong guy. And if they had been looking at him just a little bit more closely, they would have realized we probably don't want to set this kind of trap for this guy because he's very wise and he deals with these things very well. So the Bible says that he asked for a coin and he gave them something very quick to understand. I, I, I want to go a little, we're, we're a little bit over time, but I want to go a little slow with this because I just... I want us to understand what's happening in the scripture. Because the last verse that we read in this passage says, they were not able to catch him in what he said in public. And being amazed at his answer, they became silent. Now, when I read Jesus' answer, give unto Caesar uh, the things that belong to Caesar, and to God the things that are God's, for me, 
At best, that's just very clever. It's like, okay, that, that, he's got us there. Right? But, if I'm them, this is not only very clever, this is defeating. This argument has crushed everything that I was trying to do in the last few minutes. Because the language that Jesus is using, they're understanding very easily what it is that he's telling them. Give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. And we've used this sort of verse over and over again to, to mean many things that it doesn't mean. You know, we talk about, you know, this is the kind of verse that you use when you talk about you, gotta, you have to give tithes to the church. You got to pay tithes. You got to pay tithes. This isn't the kind of verse that you use even though we have historically done that, to explain why you want to, play, you want to pay tithes. The kind of verse that we use to explain why you, you should pay tithes is a verse that comes long before the establishment of the law, so it's not a legal system thing. It's a personal relationship thing between you and God. Right? I'm not going to get into all that. We've also used this verse uh, to, 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 to talk about giving to God what belongs to God. You, 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 you have to come to church. You have to have church attendance. You have to lift up your hands. You have to worship. You have to use your terrible singing voice. You have to do it all when you come into the house of God. You've got to. You need to. You have to. We use this kind of verse for that sort of thing. And that's not the way Jesus' ops understood that. That's not the way that they understood that. When he began speaking... And when he told them that they should give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God, there were two very particular Greek words that he used that made them understand exactly what he was trying to talk about. So he used the Greek word ikon, from where we get the English word icon, and he used the Greek word epigraphe, which literally means, for us it would mean to write, um, I guess you could say a title, or write something important, right? So... Having an icon or an icon, when Jesus said that, when Jesus asked them saying whose uh, uh, image is on this or whose icon is on this or whose icon is on this, whose image is on this, he was asking them whose face is on this? What does it look like? When you talk about an icon, you're talking about um, uh, the art of sculpting or, or, or engraving some sort of an image. Right? And so he was asking them, who is this that's on this coin? And when he, when he used the word epigraphy, he said, whose inscription is on this? Who wrote on it? So whose face is on this? And who wrote on this? And their answer was, well, Caesar. But by this time, they, they realized that their trap hadn't worked. They had already seen what he had been doing. Because the language and the terminology that he's using is extremely familiar to them. When you're talking about images and when you're talking about inscriptions, there's one person in scripture who translates images and inscriptions. Right? They understood his language because it made them think of one particular scripture and it made them think of one particular person. We're going to read Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. And 27. I'm laying a groundwork here. I'm going slow. Well, we're going to get somewhere kind of cool. Okay? Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. I like my version here, so that's why I'm, I'm pulling this up. But Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. They will rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, uh, the livestock, the whole earth, and the creatures that crawl on the earth. So God created man. Actually, in verse 27, that word man is Adama. It more accurately represents humanity. So God created humanity in his image. He created him in the image of God. He created them male and female. So God created humanity in what? His image. So whatever humanity is, it's a representation of what God looks like wherever he is. But God is spiritual. God is immaterial. So when we have to 
express ourselves. We can't express what God looks like as a spirit. We have to be spiritual. And we do that through our, through our very expressions. By nature, we're spiritual beings. It just happens that way. That we represent God in this material way, expressing things physically, while God, who is in the immaterial world or the immaterial realm, expresses things spiritually. How are you guys doing? Okay, 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 okay. So whatever God looks like, that's what we look like. Whatever God's image is, that's the image that we have. But here's the strange thing. God also put his inscription on us. He made us like him. So whatever God is like, this is separate from what he looks like. Whatever he's actually like, we are also like that. Whatever God is actually like, we are also like that. Because these are spiritual things, it would mean that however God presents himself, however he conducts himself, whatever his character is like, whatever qualities, whatever attributes he has, if we're like him, we express those qualities as well. We express those attributes. We have something of us that's divine and comes from him. But in the same way that humanity is not all entirely male, humanity is not all entirely female, one individual human being can't possibly reflect and express all of what God is. How are you guys doing? All right? One individual human being can't express the fullness of any one of God's qualities, or of all of God's qualities, I should say. They can't express the fullness of all of God's attributes or all of God's character points. Because we, we, God has created us in such a way where we experience limitations that are bound by the material world in which we exist. So even when we understand that God is transcendent and God is, God is infinite and God is eternal and, and he doesn't have capacity and he doesn't have potential, even when we understand those sort of things, we always have to, have to liken it to something else so that we can understand it from a simple perspective. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to tell you guys that when you're thinking about God, when you think about his qualities and when you think about his attributes, it's like thinking about a well-cut diamond. When you have a well-cut diamond, on the outside it has all these faces and you can turn it and you can move it and you can see how beautiful each individual face is. But a well-cut diamond should be transparent and if it is transparent, you can look closer inside of it and you can see that there's some sort of symmetrical thing happening in there that just makes it so much more beautiful. There are faces inside that you couldn't see when you were at a distance. There are aspects to it inside that you couldn't see until you came closer. And diamonds are weird because they do so many stuff and they just look so beautiful. They're just so amazing. They're so magnificent. And so if we had to look at that diamond and then we had to look back at God and then we had to look at us, again, no one of us can be the entire diamond. No one of us can express all of what or who or how God is. But God has set us up so that as individuals, we have propensity for things that the people around us don't always have. Listen to this. Listen closely. There's someone in this world who doesn't know God, who doesn't love people, who insists on living a life of sin, who has a more profound sense of justice than any of us will ever have. There's someone in the world like that right now. There's 8 billion people in the world right now. And there's someone who understands righteousness more than any of us could ever hope to possibly understand it. You know the age-old question, um, if a man steals bread for his family, is it wrong? Right? Different countries, different legal systems have different answers for that. You know, here maybe you would get inducted into a nice social system that would eventually help you. Maybe, maybe not. In another part of the world, maybe you would get your hand cut off in front of your children so that it would be an example that stealing is never right. But this person who exists in the world, who's a sinner, who doesn't love God, who doesn't know Jesus, and lives a wicked life, his profound sense of judgment, of, excuse me, justice, 
will give him the words to say something that will fix this problem forever and nobody is ever going to understand how he did that but we're all going to obey it because that's how profound his sense of justice is he got that from eternity he got that from being a human being he got that from being divine he got that from his maker likewise there's somebody who understands mercy so much so deeply so intensely there's somebody who navigates anger so deeply so well there's somebody who's so much more creative than any of us could hope to be and most we may never meet these people but we do meet people in our everyday lives who wow that guy's really creative how does he draw like that we do meet people in our lives who wow that person can sing how do they sing like that it's her right there how you doing lee you all right <laughs> we do meet people like that we do meet people who seem to excel at something so much that it's like how can you how can you do this how can you understand this and it's a wonder to us and we fail to realize that we have something like that inside of ourselves as well every individual has something that they are better at than every ind other individual and people will tell you no there's too many human beings you can't the earth is too big the world is too big there's too much no you everybody has something like that it doesn't always necessarily get cultivated because of what happens in their formative years, because of life circumstances. I have a relative right now who, from an early age, she was told that the best thing that she can do is be a hard worker because she's not the brightest out of her siblings. This sibling's smarter than you, so you just be a really hard worker and you'll make it in life. And she's a really hard worker. And she basically made it in life. And she draws better than anybody that I've ever met in my entire life, except that she doesn't draw because it's been suppressed. She doesn't express her creativity because she was told from an early age, that's not important. What's important is finding a trade or a task or a labor that you can put your hands to. Everybody has something that they do with a profundity that us, we can't understand. I have something like that. You have something like that. Every individual has something that expresses and relates the divineness of God in this material world. So it's possible to never know God and still have those divine qualities because he's your maker. So that ultimately is a problem. Because it is possible to have a capacity for these qualities and not be able to see them through. You can have a capacity for justice that's so much more profound than anybody else in the world around you, but one day that justice is going to be exhausted. No matter how well you understand it, one day frustration is going to cause you to give way to your anger. No matter how well you understand mercy, one day you're going to run out of patience. One day you're going to run out of kindness. No matter how creative you are, and this is, this is a little bit more simple, one day you're going to run out of resources. Right? No matter how capable you are of expressing and reflecting what you have inside that you got from eternity past from God, even that little thing, you who cannot reflect the entirety of God, the one thing that you have, it's going to be exhausted. You're not going to be able to express it all the way. You will not be able to take it the way that it needs to go. You'll not be able to see it the distance. Why? Because there's something about us that's broken. There's something that's fractured. And what happens when you have a fractured diamond? On the outside, it's still beautiful. And you can still see all those wonderful, beautiful faces. Except that when you get closer now, and you look inside, and you see the crack that's in the diamond, the beautiful symmetry that was once in there is no longer there. Instead, there's chaos. There's light going this way. There's, there's shapes that they weren't previously there. Because of this fracture that we have, because of this brokenness that we have, we can't express the fullness of the small thing that God has given us to have responsibility over. I can't take my creativity all the way to the glory of God. I can't take justice all the way to the righteousness of God. I can't take mercy all the way to the feet of God because I'm just a man. I'm fallible, I'm weak, and ultimately one day 
I'm going to pass away and suffer the permanent effects of sin. Sin which fractures us. Sin which destroys us. Sin which brings death into the world. So that's the bad news. All of that. Terrible stuff. But the good news is that there's someone who can reflect the image and the glory of God. Those faces, those images that are in the diamond that we can all only see one piece at a time, there's someone who not only sees them all at the exact same time, he reflects the image into the world. I can reflect some of God's image, but I do it imperfectly because I'm imperfect. You can reflect some of God's image, but you do it imperfectly because you're imperfect. Jesus reflects all of God's image, and he does it perfectly because he's perfect. Colossians 1 and 15 says what? He is the image of the invisible God. Not some of the image, not a face, not a fractured version, but the image of the invisible God. He reflects the glory of God. He shows the righteousness of God. He takes righteousness, he takes justice all the way to the feet of God. He takes mercy all the way to the feet of God. He takes creativity inside of us and he makes this world new, the Bible says in the book of Revelation. Jesus is the one who expresses and reflects God exactly the way that he's supposed to be seen. And what's more, when we place our trust in him, he teaches us how to do what he does. He shows us how to live in such a way where, yes, we fail. And yes, life is hard. And yes, there are difficulties. And yes, everything doesn't always go as planned. But we're on a path that leads to the fulfillment of us expressing that one little thing that God has given us so that we can reach the maturity that God desires for each and every single one of us. When Jesus asked his opponents whose face is on this and whose inscription is on this, and they said Caesar, by that time they knew that the argument was over. It was too late. Because the next most reasonable question was going to be, why are you not giving Caesar what belongs to him? Why would you not? It's his. It has his icon on it. He wrote on it. They would make a coin in such a way where somebody would come and, and, and draw. It's, it's the same as our money here in Canada. Whose face is on all the money in Canada right now? The queen, right? They say they don't want to change that because it's going to be too expensive and you know, whatever. Who cares? But her face is on all the money. And I'm sure if you search through the money, you can find some sort of inscription that talks about her, her royalty or that talks about our allegiance as Canadians to her. Same with an ancient Roman denarius coin. It has Augustus' face on it, or whichever person was a Caesar at the time. It has Caesar's face on it, and it has an inscription that says that the money actually belongs to Caesar, and he's worthy of attention and reverence and deference. So you should be giving it to Caesar. It belongs to him. It's his in the first place. There was a theologian who, who, in reference to this very verse, he said, I'm confident that if Jesus had to talk a little bit more, he would have said, give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. His image is on the coin. And give unto God what belongs to God, whose image is on you. Forget about the, 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 the lip service. Forget about the, the shortcomings. Forget about the failures. Forget about the things that you want to do excellent, but you, you, you can't bring yourself all the way there. The point is that you can't bring yourself all the way there. You're still either trying to reflect a broken image of God, or you're trying to reflect your own your own ideals into this world. But if you come into Christ and you begin to understand God through his eyes, you begin to understand who Christ is, 
from the perspective of God and you begin to let Christ shine his light through you. What happens when you shine light into a diamond? More light comes out. I want to encourage us today to submit what we have or what we think we have to God for his use. Good to have personal ambitions. It's good to have goals. It's good to want to be things and do things and go somewhere. But what good is any of that if you can't take it to where it's supposed to be? You're taking it to where you think it should be. You're taking it to where you want to get to. And then what happens when you stop? What, what, what do you do when you get there? I wanted to do this. I made it. I did it. Now what do you do? But if you put it in God's hands, he'll take it to where he thinks it's supposed to be. That's going to be better than where you thought it was supposed to be. And then it's going to keep going to places that you could never possibly imagine. Amen. Praise God. So see, I think I'm done. God bless you guys. I hope that that made sense. Yeah. Let's stand. Let's stand. I was with a pastor this week. I won't mention his name because I know he spies on me. Um, but uh, he, he was mentioning that he doesn't have, he's like over a thousand members, doesn't have someone to step into the pulpit at any given time. And I'm fortunate that I have Pastor Kadeem, Pastor Nicole, and Pastor Monique. At any given time, they can come and deliver a word. I called Pastor Kadeem. When did I call you? Yesterday at, yeah, he said 19 hours ago. I said, Pastor Kadeem, you have a word for the house. And I tell, I tell them, always be ready to give a word. And he said, no problem. And he came up and ministered. I just, I just thank God for that. Amen. 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 Now, as I pronounce a benediction over your life, or the benediction, listen to what he said this morning. This is not by chance. You saw how God moved. You saw how God moved this morning. I, I, I humbly request, with all humility, go back this week and listen to what Pastor Kadeem preached this morning. It's a loaded message that could be preached for three hours. It's, there's a lot of nuggets in it, all right? So I want you to go back and listen to it. Think about it. What image, what, what has God placed in me to demonstrate? And have I rendered unto God what belongs to God? If so, what does that even look like? That's the discussion group on Monday. What does that even look like? Amen? Go back and listen and focus. God is taking this ministry somewhere. He's speaking to each and every one of us today. If that's you online and you, you um, want to know about more about this message, don't forget to go on our Monday night recap this Monday, and we're going to break it down even, even more. I believe Pastor Kadeem will be on that call as well. You can ask questions. We're going to dive in deeper. And if that's you in the house, jump online on Monday so we can dive in deeper. Amen? Amen. Father, I thank you for this precious moment in time. I thank you for this incredible word, for you did speak to us. You did indeed speak to us. And Father, we openly declare, we openly say that we will allow the light within us to shine in this dark world. That we will express your image here on earth as it is in heaven yes we all see in part each and every one of us have something to contribute to the body of christ so i pray that those who are laying dormant those who are hiding the 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 express image that you have placed in them the gifting that you have placed within them those who are afraid to demonstrate it i pray that you will break the chains right now that is holding them back and that they will take this word serious and begin to render unto you what belongs to you. All worship, all glory, all honor, all praise belongs to you. I pronounce a blessing over the house. I speak nothing but success. Nothing but success. That we will all have a prosperous week. And that we will come back here next Sunday. All excited with praises on our lips. Ready to render what is due to your name. And that is all worship, honor, and glory. 
In your precious holy name I pray. Amen. God bless you, EKM. Have a great week.